the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, this is The Ramsey Show. It's where we help you win in your life, specifically win with your money, win in your work, and win in your relationships. Phone number to jump in is 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. I'm Ken Coleman. George Campbell joins me. We're Ramsey Personalities co-host of the show, Good Friends, and I want to say uh, as we start, just a big congratulations. It is launch week. We'll talk more about George's brand new, soon-to-be best-selling book, Breaking Free from Broke, The Ultimate Guide to More Money and Less Stress. Fabulous book. Congratulations, pal. Your first book launched this week. It's been very humbling and overwhelming in the best ways. Well, it's kind of like another type of baby, and you're a new dad. A lot. So, yeah, it's very. Is a lot of similarities. Had a baby about four and a half months ago. Both keep you up at night. (laughs) That's true. You know? I'm not sure which one was more difficult at this point, (laughs) at least for me. That's true. Maybe the book at this point. My wife will have a different story. Thanks to Whitney. That's right. All right, let's get to the phones. We'd love to talk with you. George is here to answer your money questions. I'll weigh in. I'm here to answer any questions around your work and, and making more money. George will weigh in on those as well let's go to kelly in indianapolis indiana kelly how can we help uh hi i have uh i've been kind of following the rancy plan for just trying to trying to follow it for uh maybe about uh a year a couple year or two but i just have one last credit card i just can't quite seem to uh get rid of i don't have a balance but i'm just trying to convince myself to actually get rid of it. I love this. And Kelly, I am I break this down in the new book into eight different characters. So can you tell me which one you fall into? Is it out of fear? Is it for the rewards? Is it the convenience? What is causing you to go, I, I can't cut this thing up? I feel like it's more like the maybe the pressure of like, everyone said like you should always have one you're because you never know if you're going to get stuck in a situation where you're going to need it okay so for you i'm going to call you the emergency shelter that's the sixth personality in the book i need my credit card in case of emergencies right probably yeah okay well let me tell you there's a way better emergency fund and it's where you become the bank instead of capital one and that's called an emergency fund do you have a thousand dollars saved for baby step one uh, I do. I'm actually in uh, four and six. Wonderful. So how much money do you have in savings? I have uh, just a little over, like, t- almost 11000 Amazing. Now tell me, when was the last time you had an $11,000 emergency? Uh, never. Exactly. So a lot of this is paranoia. There's fear we have to deal with. And the other piece of the equation is you have insurance that will transfer the risk. You have things called deductibles and out-of-pocket maximums. And so you're going to be protected, and you don't need these credit card companies anymore. They were never your friend, and it's just a rubber crutch. And it's only a matter of time before they come knocking, saying, hey, Kelly, we'll come save you at 22% APR. Kelly, is the $11,000, does that represent three months, four months, five months, or six months of your expenses? Uh more like culture of three. Yeah. Is there a number that, let's say George and I were, were feeling uh, like we could just cut a check here. Let's say we were having Dave's money here. We like to give Dave's money away. I like that. You and I have done it a lot uh, in our role. That's true. <laughs> we really have. Uh, let's say George and I could cut a check right now, okay? And it would add to the $11,000 in your emergency fund. And when we cut that check and you deposit it, you would go, I'm cutting this credit card up. I, I feel so much better. Is there a number? That we would add to the 11000 Be realistic here. What's the number that if we wrote a check to add to the 11000 giving you a total of, in your emergency phone, where you'd go, okay, I, I don't need this stupid credit card. Just curious. What's that number? I guess maybe, uh, maybe another 9000 to make it twenty. All right. Now, George, you see what I'm doing there. Absolutely. I'll give it back to you. You're the money expert. We just put some expert. facts on the security gland, which is largely feelings, and we just said if you had twenty grand, you would feel so secure, it would be a force field between you and life. And that would be more like six months of expenses, correct? Yeah, probably. So then, I, I'm not saying you have to do that, Kelly, but I did a little experiment there because that's what George and I are trying to get you to. I think 11 is enough for you to cut the credit card up. Well, that's what we think. That's why we teach what we teach. Should have cut it up a lot. We should have cut it up when you did baby step one, $1,000. That's what we teach. But 
Why not then? Why not put the 9,000 in? If that makes you feel better and it removes the temptation, I say go for it. That's the thing, Kelly. If you cut up the card today and an emergency happened, what would you do? You would dip into the emergency fund. Yeah. And that's what it's there for. And then once you use it, what are you going to do after you use it? You're going to replenish it. But you know, it didn't happen. You never went into debt. You were never at the mercy of the credit card companies who are supposed to be blessing you with your 2% cash back and this emergency shelter. And so I'm going to encourage you to do the brave thing. And what's amazing to me, Kelly, is as people have been reading the credit card chapter in my new book, they're telling me for years we couldn't cut it up. And you finally coaxed us into it with all of the research and humor and every objection I've ever had. I address it in that chapter. So I'm going to send you a copy of the book and I want you to read that and then send me a DM when you cut it up with a picture. Can you do that for me? Sure. That's all I ask in return. So hang on the line. Austin is going to pick up, and we'll make sure you get a copy of Breaking Free from Broke. It's Chapter 3 specifically. And uh, Ken, the— I want to do another little mindset trick, if I okay. might, George. I want I, you to join me on this. You are like the David Blaine of well, I don't think the so. Ramsey Show. But, Kelly, you said something at the start of the call when George was asking you, what's holding you back from cutting this up? And what you told him was— what other people are going to say to me because other people in your life are saying, Kelly, you're a moron. They're not using that language, but that's how you feel. But they're going, Kelly, it's silly to cut the credit card up in case something were to happen. And so you haven't cut it up because you're worried about what they'll say. But what if, what if something happens and when they hear about it, they're like, what, what did you do? You went, eh, I cut a check because I had it in the bank. Or you said, well, I kept that credit card thanks to you, and I put it on the credit card. I got to pay it off quick because it's about 23% interest. Which of those two answers are your friends and family going to be impressed with the most? You tell me. Probably the first first one. So, so, Kelly, you're not going to be viewed as silly, Kelly. You're going to be viewed as smart, Kelly, by the very people you're worried about and being criticized by true or false true there it is and guess what those friends are normal ken normal's broke we know four out of ten people have nothing in savings 25 percent of people have to use the credit card to cover the bills Mm -hmm. that's not kelly you've unsubscribed from normal and fear is a terrible financial advisor and so these credit cards you know using other people's money actually makes you feel less in control because your body's keeping the score it knows that you're not truly safe when you borrow someone else's money We don't use debt, you got less stress. And you become the bank, Kelly. That's what we want for you. We'll send you a copy of the book, Breaking Free from Broke. Let me know what you think of the credit card chapter. And send me a photo, or even better, a video of you cutting up that last credit card. I love it. This brand new baby is coming your way, Kelly. For the rest of you, you can get it right now, wherever books are sold, or at RamseySolutions.com. Don't move! We're just getting warmed up in frigid Franklin, Tennessee. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey folks, you know that sinking feeling when you make an offer on a house you love and then you hear there's another offer? You need the Churchill Mortgage Home Buyer Edge. Super fast pre-approval and a secured interest rate. Plus a $5,000 seller guarantee gives your offer the best chance of being accepted. The Home Buyer Edge from Churchill gives you an advantage over those other guys. Go to churchillmortgage.com today to learn more. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. I'm joined by George Camel, and we are here for you this hour, 888 825 George, taking your money questions. I'll take any work-related questions because that has a lot to do with your income and your mental health and your emotional health. 
It affects pretty much everything. It pretty much considering does. Considering how many hours of your life That's right. you spend working. That's right. So I want to help you out in those areas. If you're thinking about some kind of transition this year, or you're just not happy there, you're trying to figure out, do I start a side hustle? Is this the year to do it? Can I do it while I'm in the baby steps? Any kind of work-related question, I'd love to help out on that, and George will as well. 888-825-5225. Let's go to Austin, Texas. Chris is there. Chris, how can we help? Hey, Ken. Thanks for having me on, man. You bet. What's um, up? I've got a question uh, regarding we're trying to kind of restructure our debt and everything. Mm-hmm. So fortunately, my wife did really well this year, and her commission and bonus coming here in a couple months is going to be about $52,000. Whoa, way to go, so, wife. That's pretty phenomenal. Yeah, you were pretty happy phenomenal. when you found out about that, weren't you? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um. So one of the big things that we're knocking down is the remaining credit card debt, which we have about $11,000 just under with that, that we're going to knock out. And then the next things we kind of want to restructure are our vehicle loans. So um, I own my own business. Uh, I'm in distribution of beverage concentrate. So last year, about, about two years ago, it was pretty tough getting a rental car, a uh, rental van. So I went ahead and purchased a truck. Ended up paying $63,000 for that truck at a $893 a month payment. Oof. And it's been fine because it's been overall savings, I mean, versus paying, you know, $1,500 a month renting vans back then. But we're thinking about go ahead. We're going to get rid of that truck um, no matter what we do because vans are available today. But we all we do have negative equity of about, I would say, about thirteen to $14,000 in that truck just because – Car manufacturers are getting competitive right now, um, and a new truck would sell for three thousand dollars less than the one I have with forty-four thousand miles on it. Mm-hmm. So my question to you two was: Is we have a Ram fifteen hundred um, and a Jeep Wrangler? The Ram is eight ninety-three a month, and the Jeep Wrangler is six sixty-two. So the first thought that I had was to go ahead and pay the negative equity. Um, on the truck and purchase a new vehicle and we would basically assume a new loan on that new vehicle so if we found a car for twenty five thousand dollars um we could go ahead and pay the negative equity of the truck of let's say thirteen thousand dollars are you talking about the ram are you talking about the van because i'm getting confused here you said a van and then i thought you said a ram truck and a jeep yeah, so I have a Ram truck and a Jeep. The reason why I purchased the truck was because I used to rent vans. Okay, when I it took the place route. of a van. It okay. took the place. Okay, I just want to make sure there weren't three vehicles in this conversation. So the, what you've been telling us is the Ram is the one uh, that you've got the eleven thousand, excuse me, the thirteen to fourteen thousand dollar negative equity on. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Um, so what I was thinking is we have two options. So we can pay the negative equity by trading in the Ram. Uh, towards a new vehicle for her, and we're just setting ourselves a $25,000 budget, and then what we would go ahead and do is just pay that negative equity and then pay for that car cash, and then keep the Jeep payment of $662 a month, or the other option was to go ahead and pay off the Jeep, which has a remaining balance of 16326 and then pay the negative equity in the truck and put a bit of a decent down payment on that new vehicle and take out a new loan, trying to get our monthly payment down to about 400 a month, 450 a month. Well, I, I'm going to let George, George, I only want to weigh in on one issue. Okay. I just want to weigh in on the Jeep. Sure. Those cars do not hold up well. And so whatever your advice you're going to give him, I, I personally would pay off the Jeep and sell it or sell it. If you've got, do you have negative equity on the Jeep or you got a little equity in that? Um, no, I have, I have I'd say about eighteen thousand dollars equity in the Jeep. Dude, I'd sell the Jeep. Five Those days. things, I'm not trying to knock Jeep, and I don't want to get any hate mail. But I'm just telling you, I'd get rid of that. I'd sell that for sure. Anyway, George, go ahead. Well, the, the one issue that oh, there's not an issue with it. It's just that so the Jeep was a long term goal for us to be able to even purchase one, and we use it. We just had a, our first son about a year and a half ago, but prior to that, we use it about six times a year, um, going camping and going off roading. And so we made the commitment that this is the one vehicle that we're never going to sell. It's actually, oh, all gonna, right. you know, there you go. All right. like your reasoning for not selling it is because you use it six times a year. Yeah, it's not a strong case. Well, no, it's a daily driver. So we do use it to go to work and things like that. But it's a recreational vehicle in the sense that for six times a year. 
get you a little Honda yeah. Accord for the daily driver and go rent whatever the heck you want with your that's, amazing income six times a year. That's right. So let's walk through the numbers. Let me let me figure out some options for you. You're getting fifty two thousand in the bonus. Uh, you're gonna have to pay taxes out of that. Uh, no, that's gonna be gross income. So you're gonna have to pay taxes. Tax. Sorry, not gross. Net. That's net. Okay. So let's say we are the only debts you have the two car loans and the credit cards. Yes. Okay. So we we knock out the 11k credit cards. We move on to the 16,000 Wrangler. That leaves you with 25k. Correct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Now we pay off the negative equity. It's another 13k out of that, leaving you with 12. Yep. But now you can sell the Ram. And you'll have yes. You'll get out scot free. I don't think I would trade it in because the dealership's going to screw I you agree, on that. I agree, hundred percent. So you're going to get way more private party and probably not be as underwater as you think if you do it that way. Yeah. This and is the true. dealership will convince you that you need a nicer car than the one you are mm-hmm. currently looking for, and they're going to say, "Well, if you're going to spend yeah, twenty five grand, might as well spend thirty five. Get something new." That is how dealerships work, and so I would encourage you to not purchase it from that dealership. And instead, search for a quality used vehicle that you can pay twelve thousand dollars for in with the remainder in cash. Okay. And it's not going to be the prettiest vehicle, but what's your household income? Um. So just a standard salary, we're looking at about a hundred and thirty-eight thousand a year. Oh, that's good, dude. Money. Think about this. Yeah, but he's getting good money for the Ram, George. Yeah, but when you think about it this way, you spend twelve grand on a cash car. Now you have no payments in the world, making one hundred thirty-eight. How yeah. quickly can you save up an upgrade in car and do in cash? Yeah. Versus trading in yeah, exactly. debt for more debt, but we're lessening the debt. I'm like, dude, you guys make good money. You could solve this thing with this bonus. What a blessing. Mm-hmm. Let's just be done with it instead of playing the debt game. Yeah, exactly. So that's I, that's what I would do if I was in your shoes because you're calling me, telling me, hey, we make great money. But here we are with payments all over the place. And you guys have been able to justify every single one of these. But I think we're done with justification. I think we're ready for freedom instead. Yeah. No, that's that's exactly where we want to get to. And you you can find a $12,000 truck. It ain't going to be fancy, but for what you guys are using it for, it's a work truck, right? Yeah, well, and I'm going back to renting a van when I do yeah, my Yeah, he's route. not going to need it. It's going to be his driver, just his regular driver. Then just get something reasonable yeah, for so your daily vehicle, driving. Another, yeah, another reason that we're trying to get out of the truck, too, is, you know, our son, as he grew, it was a little easier when he had a baby to put him in the truck and everything. And my wife's actually pretty small, and she has an issue getting him up in the truck, and she doesn't like it. She just thinks it's big and it's large. So I relate. I relate really to that. Yeah, this is how Whitney yeah. treats George every time. She has a hard time getting George up into the van, so they went to a sedan. <laughs> yeah. Sick of the booster seat. <laughs> we joke, Chris, but I, I think we got to start making decisions for what's best for our family 10 years from now instead of, hey, well, the kids and the. We just got to make future thinking decisions, and they all need to require cash and no debt. Once yeah. you take that off the table, it's going to change the decisions you make. It's going to change your yeah, level exactly. of sacrifice. So you guys are, this is going to be all done so soon if you it's do great. it this way. But I would not trade debt for a little less debt. I don't like that game when you guys can get out of this scot-free. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and get a sedan, yeah. get something or a small SUV, whatever. You know, you got one kid, right, George? Did I get that right? So, you know what's going to happen? Kid's going to throw a peanut butter and jelly sandwich on the floor. You're, You're right. right. All these all these young couples want to get the nicest car for their kids and toddlers. Let me tell you something. The amount of goldfish that are going to be in oh the my floorboard gosh. and cram between the seats, the smarty candies. I could go on and on. Pretzels. You'll be on a Lord of the Rings quest to try to find all the crumbs in that car. <laughs> well said. Goodness and, gracious. And, and by the way, they don't make the uh, attachments on the vacuum cleaner that you need to truly get all those little goldfish. Get in all the nooks really and awesome. crannies. Yeah, it's not going to happen. Really good stuff. All right, don't move. We're going to take a quick break. Back with more of your calls. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, 
Hey guys, Ramsey Solutions started small and grew fast. Because of that rapid growth, there were times when our systems slowed us down. That's why we switched to NetSuite. It works for us and it'll help your business too. Whether you're starting on a card table like I did or you're well on your way to becoming a multi-million dollar company, NetSuite can scale with you and help you communicate and plan better. Because you know your day-to-day -day up and down and sideways, but accounting, analytics, and supply chain are on another level. So maybe you're just not tech savvy. That can be okay. NetSuite will help at your speed and whatever your situation. More than 37,000 companies use NetSuite to know their numbers and their business better. So check out NetSuite today and find out how they can help you become the business you want to be five or 30 years from now. And right now, you can download NetSuite's free KPI checklist designed to give you consistently excellent performance at netsuite.com slash Ramsey. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. George Campbell joins me. Thrilled that you are with us. The phone number is 888-825-5225. 888 825 Taking your money questions, uh, life questions, work-related, your professional journey questions. Uh, we're here for you this hour. Let's go to Joseph now, who joins us in Cleveland, Ohio. Joseph, how can we help today? Hello. Thank you for taking my call. You bet. What's up, Joseph? I just recently started just recently started going through baby steps. I'm on baby step two, and as I've been starting to share my goal of paying off all my debt with family and friends, they've I've received a fair amount of pushback mm. on why I shouldn't do that. And I wanted to see if you had any advice on how I could have respectful conversations with my family and friends while also being clear about my goals with them. Man. Well, uh, you're not the first one to experience this. When uh, broke people are, are giving you pushback about your financial plan, it means you're off to a good start. But, the, you know, I always love the quote, the best revenge is success here. And so I think you just stop talking to them about it. I mean, why do we have to have these arguments? Just go live your life, get out of debt. And uh, when you've got peace and no payments and they're all looking at you going, well, man, you got a little pep in your step. What's going on, Joseph? Yeah. You go, I got no payments. And they go, oh, I guess that plan actually worked, huh? Yeah. What was that book? Oh, Total Money Makeover. Okay. That's yeah. how these things usually go. So what kind of pushback are they giving you? Uh, it's typically that um, I have a little bit of credit card debt, and then the bigger one is my car payment. Okay. And so a lot of what I've received is, well, you should keep your car payments over time so that you can build your credit and oh, use dear. the money that you can put towards that to do other things. And you share DNA um, with these people. <laughs> Ouch. Uh, yeah, for some of them, yeah. George. But do you understand that, like, So not nice. But if you explain the credit score to them and you went, hey, so, well, let's, let's talk about this credit score idea. What do credit scores do? Mm. They allow you to get more debt. And what does getting more debt do? When you play the game perfectly, you get a higher score. And what does that do? It helps you get more debt. And so if your goal, mm. Joseph, is to not accumulate debt, because we know the pain that it causes millions of Americans everyone's broke, then I'm going to run the other direction. And if they don't understand that, that's okay. Not everyone has to totally get what you're doing here. For sure. Do you agree with them when they say these things? Uh, no, because I'm, I'm, I can feel the excitement within me of the prospect of not having any debt and being able to save and, and mm -hmm. do things. Um, and just the idea of lev trying to, you know, "Quote unquote wisely leveraged debt or anything like that. Just it sounds sounds awful to me. So no, I don't agree with them okay. at all. So uh, who is they? Do you mind? Tell us who. Uh, who yeah, I have one of like probably like my best friend is giving me a lot of pushback, and I've kind of floated the idea of paying off debt to some family members um, that I'm close with that I trust and do respect. But on this, we seem to have disagreement. Yeah. Is there another topic in life? Um, 
that you don't like to talk to anybody about, or there's very few people you'll talk to it about, like politics or something like that? I'm just curious. Any other something you go, I just, ugh, I don't want to get into that with people. Is there something like that for you? Um, I can't think of anything right. specific off the top of my mind. This needs to be one of those things. Okay. I think you need to take George's advice. I think he's absolutely right. Uh, I think you need to stop talking to your best friend about this stuff. Treat okay. it like, you know, some weird conversation and you just go, I want nothing to do with that. And I'm going to create some boundaries. I change the subject. I just think, and same thing with these other family members. If you disagree with them, then don't bring it up. Okay. I can just tell you without embarrassing any of my, there was a couple of my family members that I can't talk to about certain public figures. That's all I'm going to say. I leave the room. I don't even want to, I don't even want to touch it, George. Because it, it's just, it's not, it, it's not, a landmine. What's the point? Well, but I'm, we're not going to agree. So it's, I'm, we're past the point of fighting. I'm not worried about a fight. But it's just a waste of time and emotional 100%. energy. 100%. I'm not going to agree. Therefore, I don't want to have the conversation. And I think, George, this is one of those topics. Agreed. It's why I don't talk to you about sports, Ken. <laughs> we're not going to get anywhere. You're not going to teach me what a play action pass is. Because you'll never be able to understand it. That, again, is another waste of energy. Uh, there you go, but, but I hope you get that, Joseph. So, hey, you keep your eye on the prize. Follow the baby steps because you believe in it. And you believe that it's going to make a better life for you. And by the way, it's your life. And so all focus on that and, and, and just no more talking to everybody. Else. Unless someone pays my bills, they don't get a vote. Yeah. And so I'm just going to go, thanks, mom and dad, friend, yeah. uncle, broke cousins. I'm good. I'm going to try this plan. And if I fail successfully by getting out of debt and it's terrible, I can always get more of it. Yeah. But uh, no one's ever come to me and said that. Yeah. So that's a tough one when people don't get what you're doing. When you're a salmon swimming upstream, all the other salmon are going, dude, what are you? we're going this way, man. This is the path. And you're like, no, that's a cliff, my friend. And there's a giant bear right there about ready to eat you. Bears love salmon. Yes, they do. I, I pick Capital One is the bear in that metaphor. They're all heading toward the Capital One cliff. Yep. Those commercials are so winsome. They just make it seem so nice. You know? Well, you get Jennifer Garner smiling She's at you. She's the sweetest person on the planet, you know? Good move getting away from Alec Baldwin. You know what I mean? 100%. Yeah. Let's go to Sydney in Atlanta, Georgia. Sydney, how can we help? Hey, thank you for uh, taking my call. You bet, Sydney. What's going on? So I um, just need help with pretty much everything. Um <laughs> I'm 24. I bought uh, my first house when I was 20 um, for $97,000. It was just an older couple that wanted to sell it because they couldn't take care of it anymore. Um, So I have a mortgage. Um, I have a boyfriend that lives with me. We have a daughter. She's a year old. Um, We have a car payment. You know, we don't have any credit card debt, um, but we do have, like, a couple of small loans. Um, we just can't seem to catch up. We can't seem to save anything. Um, and I'm just tired of chasing and chasing and never being able to make any progress. Mm. What's your income? Um, so I uh, stay at home with our daughter because our <laughs> where we live, uh, our daycare system around here is just not trustworthy and... It would take like half of my paycheck to take or pay for daycare anyway. Um, so I stay home with her, and uh, my boyfriend brings about fifty thousand. Um, but I do have a business myself, but that only made a whole whopping like six thousand dollars last year. So okay, so you guys uh, are making fifty six k. And what are your payments add up to? Because so far you've got some personal loans, the car loan, and the mortgage. If you added um, those so up. My, I have a car that's paid off, but it's always in the shop. So that's our only hesitation with selling his car. Um, his car has 14000 left on it. Um, the house has 88 left on it. Um, and then I have a part of my business. I have a sewing machine that's on um, uh, on a loan. And, What's um, the sewing machine worth? Um, it's... It was originally like fifteen hundred dollars. It's got like a thousand left on it, but I'm planning on paying that off soon. Okay. As how well as the computer. How much do you guys have in savings? Um, we we 
barely have a thousand in savings. Okay. Whew. Well, I feel your pain. Uh, luckily, you guys have a small mortgage, and so we're going to ignore that right now. Mm-hmm. If you added up your car, the car loan and the personal loans on the sewing machine computer, are we talking fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars? Um. No, like I said, there's the sewing machine's only eleven hundred left, and the computer is like five hundred. So, okay, cool. So it's about fifteen point five is what I'm adding oh, up to. Yeah. So mm-hmm. here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna lay these out smallest to largest. We're not gonna get overwhelmed by the big picture, and we need to get mm-hmm. this income up. If that means your boyfriend is doing side hustles for the next six months to clean mm-hmm. up this mess, great. If it means selling the car and getting something cheaper to get around in right now, great. But this is a this is a mm-hmm. solvable problem. You make 56, we're trying to pay off 15. How quickly can we do it? How do we get that margin? We got to make more. We have to spend less. And if that means you going back to work for a little bit, even if daycare, you're gonna net an extra 500 bucks. That's gonna help. Find it. Find an, a, a grandmother in the area that wants to make a little money, wants to get out of the house, that you can trust, and she watches the child in your home. Go make more money. This is the Ramsey Show. Hey, if you're in over your head with student loans and tired of getting calls from collection agencies, if private student loan debt is taking away your financial peace and you don't see any way out, you need Y Refi. They're not a debt settlement company and they're not connected to a bank. Y Refi refinances defaulted private student loans that other places won't touch and gives you a custom loan built for you based on your ability to pay. So when you refinance your private student loan debt with Y Refi, you'll have a payment you can afford with a low fixed interest rate you couldn't get anywhere else to help you stick to your budget and work the debt snowball. And you can save thousands of dollars. To learn more about this custom refinancing option and a lump sum payoff option you could qualify for after 24 months, call 844-2-RAM or go to yrefi.com slash Ramsey. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. George Campbell joins me. We're here for you, America. The phone number is 888-825-5225. 888 uh, This is big news, George. I got to mention this uh, because I just got the email a couple days ago. Uh, we've got a brand new event uh, entitled Total Money Makeover. Pretty good idea. Total Money Makeover Weekend. May 10th and 11th, named after the best-selling book that's ever come out of Ramsey Solutions, Dave's unbelievable classic Total Money Makeover. And so in one weekend, you're going to crash course on everything we teach about money. Uh, Brand new content from all of us Ramsey personalities. And uh, this is a great, great event because no matter what baby step you're on, it's going to fire you up. You're going to have a lot of Q&A time with all the personalities, and uh, that's always really, really fun. We just get to hang with you. Early bird tickets start at just $99, uh, but this is only for a limited time. Get your tickets now at RamseySolutions.com slash events. That's RamseySolutions.com slash events. Always fun. I'm pumped for this. When we have it here on our campus. Rumor has it. You could witness Smart Money Happy Hour Live with Rachel Cruz and I on Friday night. And a special guest. Ken Coleman? I think it's time. Is this the event? I'm going to throw it out there. This? I, I'm, I, I, it's a soft pitch, but uh, you have talked about having me on, and I thought to myself, Ad I nauseum. don't know if your regular audience wants the special guest that much. I think it's time. But I think at a live event, you, me, Rachel, cocktails, and uh, If that's what content, gets, gets butts and seats for the Total Money Makeover weekend, I'm in. I don't know that it will. But but a, that is a great deal fun. for an entire weekend event right here at the it, headquarters. It'll be fun. Just I'm th- I'm putting it out there. I won't lobby you. Thank you. All right. Very good. Kayla's up in Atlanta, Georgia. Kayla, how can we help? Hi. Thanks for taking my call. You bet. What's up today, Kayla? 
So I'm a college student um, getting a biology degree, mm-hmm. and initially I was going to go to dental school, but I'm not really too interested in getting, you know, just a ton of student debt yeah, now. Yeah, good for you. So I've always wanted to be an entrepreneur, so I prayed on it, and I just decided that I wanted to start a clothing line. So I took a business course, and she was basically, you know, just telling how to secure business funding and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I know, you know, how you all feel about, you know, business loans, but I created a business plan and, but I didn't know that they asked for like collateral and stuff like that. Right. So my parents aren't too interested in, you know, putting their house up for collateral. So now I'm just like, I don't know what to do now. Like, cause I really want to be financially free. I'm glad you called. So So you haven't taken out any loans out. Correct? No. Okay. okay. So, Kayla, business funding is just fancy for a loan. And now you know that. Yeah. And mm-hmm. and so can I just encourage you that you don't need a loan, nor do you need a ton of capital to launch a business mm-hmm. in America today. Now, the clothing business, I would tell you that's a that's a pretty high risk, very competitive world. Would you agree with that statement? Yes. So if you were to go get a bunch of loans with a great business plan, all the collateral, all the things that you don't want to do, and you're right, by the way, you would still have a tremendous amount of risk. And so how do we remove the risk? By a small test. Now, do you plan to design the clothing? Yes. What are you thinking? If, if In your business plan, did you, did you, uh, did you highlight uh, two or three different articles of clothing? Yes. What were you thinking? Um, like just matching fits. Um, I already talked to like a manufacturer to find a manufacturer to find out, you know, how much it would be to get them. Okay. What did you um, find out? They were about $30 a piece, like for the matching top and the matching bottom. So 60 bucks for this matching outfit. Is this casual wear? Is it, what is it? Um, yes, it's casual wear. And no, together they're both, they equal up to 30. Oh, okay. So your hard costs on both top and bottom are $30. And what have you found out in the market as you were putting this business plan together that this type of combo, this outfit, what, what, what's the, what's the uh, uh, wholesale or uh, retail price? Um, about 115 115 That's what your competitors are doing for something similar. Yes. Okay. Well, we, it's a pretty good margin, but still, you get into manufacturing, and I don't know if you've read the story. If you haven't, you should you should pull anything you can online. There's a lot of it out there on Sarah Blakely's story. She lives in the Atlanta mm-hmm. area, and Sarah is the founder of Spanx. Have you heard of her? Yes. You need to read her story. There's a lot of hustle and, and effort on this, and I my point here is, you need to start smaller than, than right out of the gate with your dream item. I love the mm-hmm. ideal item of the top and the bottom and the, you know, and it's casual wear and it's comfy and we retail for 115. But there's a lot that goes into that and you're gonna have minimums that you're gonna be required to up front with the manufacturer because he's got a manufacturing company's gonna get paid up front. Or, or at least a portion okay. up front, right? I'm not a super expert on this, but I know the basics. And so I'm just walking you through this. So there will be some upfront capital, and it needs to be cash. So to the extent that you can get out of college, start working, save up a bunch of cash to get to a point where you go, okay, I can at least invest this amount of cash, and I'm going to go with one or two items. I'm going to go online, and I'm going to try some things. That's the long term. What can you do in the short term with maybe some jewelry or a t-shirt or a sweatshirt or something that you can test out online. I want to bring George in here because he really understands this world. I weirdly do. And it's it's embarrassing. I'm holding back. So I wanted to bring you in at this point and and now walk her through what would be a, uh, let's call it a, a low risk economical test. Well, the way I think about this, Kayla, is you can't just get out there and be like, I have clothes for $100. Why why should they buy yours over the brand that they know? And so you need to create mm-hmm. some unique value proposition here. And I would start by creating an audience. Do you have a big Instagram following? TikTok following? Um, somewhat. Somewhat, yes. So I would focus on that. And it doesn't have to be clothing you made. If you have good style, I assume you're very stylish. 
and your friends compliment you <laughs> yeah. on your outfit. I think right? she sounds like she's very stylish. Yeah. So I would start doing outfit of the day. Here's how I pick these outfits. Here's the mm-hmm. the idea behind it. Here's my wardrobe. Here's some deals I found on clothes that I love. And you start to become sort of a fashion influencer. Now, all of a sudden, you build up a following of 40,000 people. Brands want to work with you. You're getting money from that. Now you can launch your own line. Mm-hmm. That's how all the people I've seen actually do it successfully. And that's okay. a, um, that's not going to happen tomorrow, right? This is a six month, yeah. two year, five. But there's year also plan. no debt baked into that, Kayla. You know, start okay. small is what we're getting at. Start small, okay. grow slow. Uh, this is not going to be your day job coming out of college. And I'm not saying that to shatter mm-hmm. your dreams. I'm saying that to support your dreams. Your day job will support this side hustle until you can get the boat close to the dock, to where that side hustle now makes more than your day job, or close, and you can now pursue it full time. Are you tracking with us? Are we making sense? Yes. Um, I just, I mean, I'm, at the end of this month, I'm going to be getting my refund check. It's about $9,000. So I was wondering if I should use some of that to um, invest into the business or whatever, but it's just that my rent is, it, my refund check does also cover my rent. So I was wondering if I should like ask my parents if they can support me a little bit on the rent while I use. Do you have any debt? To... No. And do you have an emergency fund? Fully funded? Um, No. That's where that goes. I think that refund just became your emergency fund. Once you have no okay. debt and an emergency fund of three to six months of expenses, now we can begin investing for the future in retirement and a Roth IRA and for this business. Kayla, listen, I know you're grasping what we're saying, but you went right back to, well, I need to ask mom and dad for help to pay my rent so I can eat. Listen, you don't need to use the 9000 right now. That 9000 as a safety net in the form of an emergency fund for a graduating college student is phenomenal. You're ahead of the game. No debt. Now go get a really good paying job. Two or three pages and start okay. doing what George is talking about, where we test the idea of can I figure out how to sell clothing for a profit? Post pictures That's, of it and say, would you yeah. buy this or would you buy this? Yeah. And start to test this out. But That's exactly Yeah, we just right. took a call this week. This couple took out $200,000 in small business loans. What? The business failed. Now they're getting regular jobs and they're freaking out. And I don't want that for our friend. Yeah, Taylor. it's like a penalty for trying something. That's not how it needs to be in America. It just adds emotional and financial pain on top of the failure of the business. Yeah, if you do it right, it's the American dream, not the American nightmare. But no debt, folks. All right, good hour. Thank you, George Campbell. Thank you, James Childs and all the guys in the booth that keep us on the air. Thank you, America, for listening. This is The Ramsey Show. of Ramsey Solutions. This is The Ramsey Show. It's where we help you win in your life, specifically winning with your money, in your work, and in your relationships. I'm Kim Coleman. George Campbell, my good friend, is here with me this hour. 888-825-5225. 888-825-5225. George will lead and guide on the money questions. I'm here to chime in on any of those questions, plus the work-related questions. Not happy in your work? Want to make some more money? Bigger shovel? How do I make more income in 2024? I'm here for that as well. And uh, also very excited. This is uh, uh, the last uh, weekday of George's launch week, Breaking Free from Broke, the ultimate guide to more money and less stress. Look at that. That's a fabulous looking book right there. The orange Thank you, cover. Regardless of my face on it. Yeah. Well, the team did a great job. You got a great face, George. Thank you. So well, it's been a exciting. fun week. The uh, The feedback has been amazing. The Good. reviews are pouring in. And there was a guy on the live stream we did yesterday, the Q&A for the book launch, 51 years old, and he had tears. And he was going, this book gave me hope that it's not too late for me. Wow. He's in customer service in Kentucky. He's got some debt to pay off. Wow. And I'm glad I could give him that hope. And I told him, 
His name's Calvin. I said, call the show today. So, Calvin, if you're out Hopefully there. Hopefully, Calvin will call, call us in. up. Because I said, Ken's going to be able to help you with this work stuff. Oh, boy. And help you make more income. I hope to so. To clean up this mess. I love it. Well, really good and very excited for you, George. It's going to help a lot of people, a new generation of people that never heard of Total Money Makeover are going to really be helped with breaking free from broke. You can Appreciate get it at that. com or anywhere books are sold. All right, let's go to my old stomping grounds when I worked for the governor of Virginia. Wow. Richmond, Virginia area is where Austin. Austin joins us. Austin, how can we help? Uh, hey, guys. Thank you so much for taking my call. You bet. What's up? Um, I've actually, we've, me and my wife, we've, uh, we're in a bit of a debt, but I keep seeing all this um, stuff about S&P 500 and how if you, in your 30s, if you start in your 30s, you can put like $100 a month and whatnot. And I want to know if that would be a good idea to start doing that, knowing that we're still in debt. Mm. How much debt do you have? Two hundred and twenty-two thousand. Whoa, that's a bit to you. Wow. Yeah. What, yeah. What's well, that I mean, made out of? One hundred ninety of it's out. Um, oh. Thirty-one thousand. Oh. Yeah, thirty-one thousand eight hundred is a uh, is um, a private loan and credit card. And okay. Then, and then plus my wife's car. And then the hundred ninety-one thousand is for our house. And then I have eleven left on my car. Okay, so we got two car loans and and credit cards and personal loans? Just one personal loan and one credit card, yes, sir. Okay, and what does just the consumer debt add up to if you take out the mortgage? Uh, right at forty, right at 43000 Great, so that's the number I want you to, to tattoo in your mind right now. How much money do you guys make okay. per year? Um, she makes around 50. I am actually on disability, but I, I make around 19 and then, um, I actually am able to do this, uh, delivery order thing. So I can make an extra 1100 a month. So I make around 19,000, not including the, uh, 12,000 that's not guaranteed every month. Okay. So maybe we'll call that 30, 69,000. Yeah. 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 So 30 for you, 50 for her, we're going to call that 80, and we got 43 to pay off. So now this becomes a little math equation going, how quickly can we pay off 43, make an 80, of course, after taxes? Mm -hmm. Now, focus on the consumer debt instead of the mortgage and go, how much margin do we have outside of our normal bills that we could create to throw at this debt? Because I'm looking at this going, could you, after taxes, this become 55, 60,000 that you guys are working with? Yes, sir. Okay. Right, right, yeah, right around. So we're talking five grand a month. What's your mortgage payment? Fourteen fifty. Okay. So once you subtract your normal bills, your basics, we're talking food, utility, shelter, transportation, insurance. Do you have an extra pile of money at the end of each month, or are you guys in the red? We're we're almost in the red. Yes, very very close to it. Because, because of all the debt payments. Uh, that. Oh, well, the credit card is the main thing because that you know the uh, interest rate is outrageous. So that's the main thing we're working on, um, but we can't work on it too much. So basically, what I like every ounce of income I make outside, whenever I'm doing deliveries or things like that, I throw all that straight towards the credit card because the interest rate is just so high, and so little actually goes to the um, to the principal, you know, and the sure. rest goes to the interest. So. so Talking yeah, about we all this, very little. do you see why investing right now is not a good idea? Y yes. You don't have any to, money. That's why I was so curious. Do you know how you could yeah, get no, more money to invest? No. If you freed up all those debt payments, what would that add up to in your life, these consumer debts? That 43000 free up all those payments. Is that like an extra 1000 bucks a month in your life? Oh, yeah. You could do some investing with an extra 1000 bucks and no payments, right? Yes, sir. So we're going to get you back to investing. I know you said you're in your 30s. Yeah, I'm 33 and my wife's 30. Okay, I'm 34. And let me tell you, you can pop onto our investing calculator and go, all right, we're going to be debt-free in two years. And then six to 12 months later, we're going to have a fully funded emergency fund. So you will be, what, 36 years old by then? Yes. Big whoop. And you're going to be investing 15% of your household income, which for you guys about 80 grand. So let's say 12 grand a year, right? Okay. And let's say you're starting with zero. I'm using this calculator right now to show you from age, this is pretty mind-blowing. Um, yeah, I want you to share this because I'm looking at an eye-popping number here on your screen. Well, can... okay. You ready for this? From age 36 to age 60, if you start with zero, and that's age 60. Most people will work beyond that. 
1200 bucks a month, because remember, you're going to invest 15% of your income, which is about 15 grand, at 10% rate of return. Like you said, the S&P 500, on average, 10 to 12% uh, since its inception, you would have $1.5 million at age 60. Holy, okay. And that's, <laughs> and that's if you start three years from now, Austin. But can I tell you what most people do? Most people keep fiddling mm-hmm. with debt. They're investing 2%, 3%, putting money in acorns and some spare change, hoping they're going to have money one day. Instead, our plan says, hey, one thing at a time, focus on the debt, focus on the emergency fund, then we can get to investing with a vengeance. So that's what I want for you, and I think you'll get there in no time. But continue getting that income up. That's a huge part of it. So can I do a little exercise? Let's do it. With you. Um, And I'm trying to think of the person who's maybe listening going, I'm not young. I'm not 33, 34. Let's put in age 50. Okay. Let's make up. Let's let's uh, let's, so let's go say fifty with maybe to sixty-seven. A, is that fair? Age fifty to age sixty-seven. Okay. And let's what what's a uh, let's take a um, a reasonable salary. The fifteen percent. Uh, what do you think is the right? So I number? think seventy grand is the average in America for household. Seventy grand. Okay. So we're talking fifteen percent is ten five. Ten five. Which is Ken, if you're doing the math at home, going to be eight seventy five a month. So eight seventy five a month. Let's say you started with zero. At retirement. age 50. At age 50, you start with zero, and you invest 875 a month at 10%. You would have almost half a million dollars. That's extraordinary. At 11%, over half a million. At 12%, you would have almost 600,000. That's what. Thanks for doing that, because I want people to understand. It, you know, it's not too late. Yeah. You can really make up some ground. Uh, and that's on a very reasonable number there. So really fun stuff. And that, yeah, most people in their 50s are at the top of their salary. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. It is doable. Great call, Austin. You guys are going to be okay. Just follow the plan. All right, don't move. I'm George. Uh, actually, I'm Ken Coleman. You're, I'm George. You're George Campbell. I don't know what's I'd happening. I'd love to be Ken. I know one thing. This is The Ramsey Show, and we'll be right back. If you're like most people, your home is your most valuable asset. And when you want to make improvements, it can feel like everything costs too much or takes too long. But something as simple as custom window coverings from Blinds.com can completely change your space and add value to your home. We've recommended Blinds.com for over a decade, so you know you can trust them. From blinds, drapes, and shutters to motorized shades, they make it easy and affordable to upgrade your entire home, and their team is ready to help with everything from design consultation to measuring and installation. Plus, there are never any misleading quotes or hidden fees. Everything's backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee, and shipping is always free. See why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Go to Blinds.com and save up to 35% off everything site-wide. That's Blinds.com to learn more. To the Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. George Campbell joins me. 888 825 5225 is the number. Thrilled that you're with us. Grace is joining us now in Jacksonville, Florida. Grace, how can we help? Hi, thank you for taking my call. You bet. Um, so I'm calling for two reasons today. Uh, the first are my best friends, Alyssa and Brian, completed baby step number two today. So I Ooh. wanted to give them a shout out. Oh, what's their names again? Alyssa and Brian. Alyssa and Brian, way to go. You guys are rock stars. Hello. Absolutely. Um, But my husband and I actually have a question as well. Uh, We've been working the baby steps, and we have two paid-off vehicles, a car and a truck. We have a baby on the way, so the truck won't be conducive to our family. Um, we are wondering if we should sell the truck and throw the money at our student loans. Could you just live with one car? Is that the plan? 
for a bit until we save up to pay in cash for our next vehicle. Um, I think we could do that, yeah. Okay. What's left on the student loans? Well, so far we've paid off a hundred k in total between our cars and the loans, and we have forty k left. Awesome. So this will be knocked out pretty quick. What's your household income? Household income is a hundred and fifty k. Love it. And what's the truck worth? The truck is probably worth sixteen k right now at the low end. Okay. So if you sell it for sixteen, it'll knock your student loans down to twenty four. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, so it just help you speed this up. But it's not going to be a – you're not knocking it out completely. Do you have any other savings? Uh, we have our emergency fund, and that's about it. We're full-blown doing the baby steps. Okay, because one thing I'm going to mention is while you're having a kid, we call this stork mode. And we tell people, hey, mm-hmm. pause the debt snowball, and you need to save up and just stack up cash until mom and baby are home healthy so that you have money to cover any unexpected medical expenses. Okay. So I might, uh, you know, hold off and save up as much cash as you can. When when's the baby due? The fourth of July. Woo! Wow, very exciting. <laughs> Ken loves that. He loves I Independence do. Day. I do. I'm trying not to break out into the Star Spangled Banner right now. I'm gonna Where's hold Lee back. Greenwood when you need him? Yeah, don't get me started. There we go. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I think you guys are onto something here, selling the truck if you don't need it. And I would stack up as much cash as you can, and then at that point, we can sell the truck, we can clean up the student loans, and making 150 do you guys just have the student loan payment right now? Yeah, that's it. That's our only debt. Okay. Awesome. We do have a mortgage. Sure. Well, I think I would set a goal for how quickly you're going to clean up the student loan. I mean, it would be amazing if you could clean up the student loan and have the emergency savings by the time baby's here, depending on what your income is doing. Well, we're tracking uh, having the student loans cleared right about when the baby's here or shortly after. We pay about forty or 4000 a month. Okay. You're, that's how much you're, so, you're able to throw at it. Yes. That's, that's fantastic. Well, if you can sell the truck, clean up the student loans, and have an emergency fund in place by the time baby's here, then I would, I would go with that plan. That's the goal. All That's right, a fun, aggressive so goal. Yeah, you guys are on on track. Love that's it. exciting. Love it. And love the shout out for their friends. That's that's really that's cool. a good friend right that's there. A, that's a great tribe to be a part of, people that are getting out of debt and taking control of their money. Let's go now to Salt Lake City, Utah. Grayson is on the line. Grayson, how can we help? Hey, so I've listened to your guys' show just a little bit here and there, some videos on Facebook and that kind of thing. And um, I feel like... You know, it's a lot of times about these big debts and those kinds of scenarios. And me and my wife, you know, we're young. We're just trying to get started. We're both in school, and we're trying to figure out the best ways to get into, like, a routine budget and get started on investing and that kind of thing, you know, setting long-term goals. Cool. So where are you guys at financially right now? What's the household income? Yeah, so it varies um, on a month-to-month basis just because we both work part-time and you know, hours vary a lot. So I, as I look back over the last couple of months, it's probably somewhere between 2,500 to like 4,500, give or take. Okay. And that's your net income or gross? Yeah. Net. Okay. Cool. And what are you guys doing for work? I ref high school basketball and my wife works as a CNA for a senior care center. How much do you make ref in high school basketball? It's sixty-two dollars a game, actually. Okay, and are you full-time student? Did I hear? Yeah. Okay. All right. When will you both graduate? Next spring, if everything goes on track. Okay, and then your incomes will go up after that. Yeah. Cool. And how much debt do you guys have? Uh, the only thing that we have is my car and my parents. Um, they bought it outright for it in cash, and I've just been paying them ever since, and there's about $9,000 left on that. And you just owe that to your family with no real yeah. terms and conditions? Right, yeah. Okay. How much do you have in savings? Uh, 8500 Oh, wow. Well, this debt's almost gone. I would uh, once, once you got ten, i I'd pay that off and have the 1000 left for your starter emergency fund. Okay. And that'll clean up your debt, right? So you both would have no debt at that point? Yeah. 
Okay, and then we can begin to build a fully funded emergency fund of three to six months of expenses. So looking at your budget, I would go through all of the expenses, add those up for one month. On a given month, it costs us $3,000 to cover all of our basic bills. Let's have six months. That's eighteen grand we need to focus on saving up. Okay. That's probably going to take you guys another 12 months. Sounds about right, yeah. Okay. So about a year from now, you're ready to invest because you have no payments in the world and you have a bunch of money ready to protect you. That's going to feel good, isn't it? Yeah. And you said you guys are young. How old are you two? Uh, I'm 21. My wife uh, is 19. She turns 20 in a couple of weeks. Oh, my goodness. Think about that. 22 and 20 years old, no payments, fully funded emergency fund. You're graduating. Your income's going to go up. Now we can begin investing 15% of our income at that point and really start to build some wealth. That'd be nice. Yeah. And and you talked about starting your marriage on the right foot. Goodness gracious, man. Having no debt payments and an emergency fund is going to help you avoid about 90% of your marital fights. That's the goal. I, we've wondered, too, though, with you know both of our work situations, it, we would really like to get a second car. We've been holding it off, obviously, as much as possible because we don't want to go into debt. But we also like having a savings account that we can you know, just to have in case we need something. What would you guys recommend in that scenario of, you know, how to, if, if we need a second car, how do we go about getting one? Um, you need more yeah. money. You buy the car you can afford in cash. And if okay. you don't like that car, you need to keep saving and you need to keep living off one car. But That's those right. are your only two options. Yep. Do not go into debt. So one of the things that will help you here is, I because I, we say things like that, and you go, okay, I get it. But what you need to start looking at is, what would 7000 buy me? I'm randomly picking a number. What would 10000 buy me? Sure. What would 12000 buy me in Salt Lake City? Start shopping, okay? Uh, you can go look at used cars, go under 15000 under ten, under five, whatever, and just begin to go, okay, ah, all right. So now we have a target, because it's really hard to – to chase something that's not clear. And so if we go, okay, right. I, 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 I saw a couple of cars and I think, I think, babe, if we come up with 10 grand, we're gonna be able to get you a great car or whatever. Okay. Now we have a very clear goal. So now all of a sudden you go, what must I do to get 10 grand extra in cash? Well, I'm going to be reffing more basketball games or I'm doing something different. You know, uh, I'm selling anything that I've got or whatever. So now we go, okay, we work backwards. It's just reverse engineering. Good ten thousand dollar car, eight to ten is going to get us a pretty solid car for us. So that's what we got to come up with. And so now you have a very clear, attainable goal. That's gotcha. how you accomplish stuff like that. Got it? Yeah, that makes sense. All right, you're a sharp young man. Congratulations on uh, being in a, 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 a situation like this where the young married couple, their whole future in front of them, George, and in good shape. Yeah, 21 years old. That's amazing. He's getting this stuff now. If he actually does the stuff we just taught him, he's going to be a multi-millionaire with a wonderful marriage. Oh, it makes me think back to the last segment when you got out the old investment calculator. They are not far from being able to invest and just really. I thought reap the benefits. for a second you were about to go coach some basketball, Ken. You're like, hey, this is a good side gig. I'd nah. love, love to see Coach Coleman out there. Yeah. I mean, look, 62 bucks a game isn't bad, but he needs more money than that. Mm. This is The Ramsey Show. We'll be right back. Hey guys, I've told you before about Christian Healthcare Ministries, a health cost sharing ministry. But listen to Jenna, a CHM member. She says, one of my biggest concerns about entrepreneurship and motherhood was figuring out how to take care of our health expenses. But we have found a solution that works for us in an incredible way. She loves that with CHM, she can help other families who need it and receive help back when her own family has an eligible medical event. CHM has been a godsend for Jenna. That's her CHM story, and it could be yours. Learn more and join at chministries.org slash budget.
Welcome back, America. You're joining the conversation here on The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. George Camel is with me, and we're here for you. 888-825-5225, 888-825-5225. The Ramsey Show question of the day is brought to you by Neighborly, your hub for home services. Neighborly offers a helpful uh, why, uh, a helpful. Reminder maintenance checklist. That's not written right. Uh, you can download for free at neighborly.com. And for the more challenging stuff in and around your home, and that's basically everything for me. Everything, George, is an extra challenge. Everything's for me. a challenge for us, uh, Ken. Neighborly has local pros to help. Find out more at neighborly.com slash Ramsey. Today's question comes from Jason in Virginia. My wife and I have taken the FPU class. We have no debt, and we own a home worth $270,000. I feel like the focus of your programs are directed toward people who live in upper middle class. We live in the country. We homestead. We grow a lot of our own food, and I work full-time and side jobs. My wife cares for her elderly mother full-time. We hire assistant care to give my wife one day a week to get out of the house. But when I look over the list that I'm supposed to be living up to— I feel as if I have failed. I've never worked a job that has a retirement plan. I've never had a large income. I feel God has blessed us, but my present retirement plan is work till you die. Whew. Wow. That's a strategy. Mm. Well, I th- let me say this before you break the money part down. You know, I believe we were made, a- made to work, and I think that there's certainly uh, – in in the older season of your life, you certainly want a downshift, yes? But – not doing anything, working to a point to keep your mind active is certainly, certainly helpful. So I understand, like, I, we were talking about this the other day, Stacy and I, with our retirement planner, and he's like, Ken, you're going to work until you're 70. And I go, 70? Like, I, I want to be putzing around, driving around, still putting a suit on, trying to get myself together in the morning to go do something, speak, communicate, yeah. something well into my 70s. Uh, so to that end, I don't want to poo-poo this idea Sure. Uh, but um, but it sounds like there's a cynicism here. to it. Yeah, something's off here. On or I'm this. gonna have to work until I die. Yeah, which is different. Uh, so he says he's taken FPU. They have no debt. They have a home worth two seventy. He says his, he's never worked a job that has a retirement plan. Let me make it clear to everyone out there: just because your job doesn't have a retirement plan doesn't That's mean right. you shouldn't be investing or that you can't invest. There are lots of ways to do this. If you're self-employed, there's SEP IRAs and solo four hundred one ks. Anyone with earned income can contribute to a Roth IRA or a backdoor Roth IRA if your income's too high. And so there's no excuse to just not be investing. There's even taxable brokerage accounts outside of retirement that you can just shovel money away to grow with compound interest. So I don't like this idea that, well, I don't have a retirement plan, so I don't invest. So we need to start. I don't know how old you guys are. It doesn't say here. Um, But if she has an elderly mother, it tells me they can't be that old. Yeah. And so I would get on the get on the ball here and start investing and start having a plan to where you get to work, but you don't have to work. Yeah. It's I a love very that. different mentality. Yeah. Great advice. Uh, thank you, Jason. Uh, get your chin up a little bit. I, I would I just want to address something very quickly. Our baby steps are not in any way designed for upper middle class. I, I do want to address that. Uh, I, I would say they work for all classes. And let's not forget, by the way, that there are more six-figure earners in America right now living paycheck to paycheck than any other time in American history. So uh, that's upper class, upper middle class, middle class, and and down. So this and we is see just, the stories. We see people yeah. who now when they start the baby steps, they tell us, "Yeah, we were making forty thousand, sixty thousand, eighty thousand, and we did side jobs, and we got our income up, and we got the promotion, we switched careers. All of that's going to help you get to that six-figure household level. But the average household in America is seventy grand. Yeah." And you can do this plan making 70 grand. That's exactly right. It's just discipline and it's just understanding the baby steps that they work together. And once you get momentum, we've seen this. Uh, what's the latest data on on people that take FPU, how much they are able to pay off and save? Oh, I believe over it's like an $8,000 turnaround between the debt paid and dollars saved. Yeah. And see, here's my point once you really get this system, and you begin to experience momentum, right? It may come, momentum may look like getting that first thousand dollars for some people. For others, it's knocking out two or three of the debts in the baby in baby step two. But it's kind of like you ever had a Pringles, George? Oh you my just, gosh! Have yes. you ever just had one Pringle? No, once you pop, you just can't stop. That's the tagline. That's the tagline. And so, same thing. Once you get going in the baby steps, 
the momentum just builds and builds and builds, and, and it's doable. So That's so true. Well, there other plans out there, Ken, it's like the financial plan is like cottage cheese. I'm like, I wouldn't even take a, a spoon of that. It's yeah. not interesting to me. It's not. It's Who wants cottage cheese? Don't even know don't, what's in there. I don't want Too it. much cottage. That's it. Let's go to AJ, who's in Buffalo, New York. AJ, how can we help? Good. How are you guys doing today? Good. Are you in the Buffalo area? <laughs> Well, not at the moment. Currently, my wife and I travel for work, so oh, okay. we're kind of up and down the East Coast right now. Well, you know what I was thinking? I'm a big football fan. I was looking at the uh, playoff game last year and all that uh, last week, all that snow and just insane <laughs> what you folks do deal with up there. You guys are incredible. Resilient. Yeah. We get like yeah. eight inches here yeah. and it's like apocalyptic. You guys, yeah, nah, it's a Tuesday. No problem. Yeah, it's a Tuesday. So how can we help, AJ? So right now, my wife, uh, she's got to work. I just picked her up, and we're kind of going back and forth on the two paths we're looking at right now. We're looking to settle down, start a family. You know, we don't want to wait too much longer. You know, we just turned 31, uh, both of us. And right now, we have either the path of settling down, getting my wife a new job because she is a traveler, uh, and or buying a house, settling down, whatnot, and or we have been given the option to purchase a, a a fitness center. And we're trying to figure out which financially is going to make most sense for us at this point. Mm. Tell me about the fitness center. Uh, before we get to a job for her, what's the fitness center situation? So I previously come from a, a fitness background and whatnot, and it's always been my goal to potentially down the road at some point own a gym. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of something we've always toyed with, with the option. If it's something, you know, maybe like a passive income source or something, you know, down the road for us. And um, we kind of got given the option to potentially buy a gym and we would need to take a loan out on it. So we're trying to figure out if that is the correct move for us. Um, it'd be an owner-operator gym for us, so my wife would take over that position as a manager there. Um, is kind that of gym profitable right now? Yes. How profitable? Uh, so overall, net as far as cash flow, probably talking like two fifty a year. Okay. And. How familiar are you with the ins and outs and operations of running a gym? Uh, not super familiar. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I got I got warning signs. Yeah, I got warning signs because uh, of two things. Number one, uh, how much would you have to take out? What would be the loan amount? Uh, about five hundred thousand. Yeah, that's crazy to me. You have no experience at all. Um, it's not spitting out a lot of profit. Two fifty is pretty low margin, and you said passive income. No chance. <laughs> running a gym <laughs> is is about as passive as running a marathon. It's it, it's just not a passive income model, and so there's just a couple of signs. And again, I'm not AJ in any way trying to be unkind or uh, I love the entrepreneurial vision. I don't want you to take of course we don't we don't tell anybody to take out loans so the answer on that is no but it's mm-hmm. just not a good business to get into given the fact that you have no experience in it and you're thinking it's mm-hmm. a passive income model i'll give it back to george here but I, I i would rather your wife go get a really good paying job and let's forget about gym ownership or owning any company right now that we have no experience in at all George, yeah. is that too un- is that too uh, unkind? No, I just I think anytime we have we're presented with the option or the opportunity to go half a million dollars into debt, I, I go red flag, red yeah, flag. Yeah, yikes! I would pause and go, how do we do this the right way? How do we cash flow this? This might be a plan that you do ten years from now when you can save up that kind of money. But we just had a call this week, AJ. They took out two hundred grand in SBA loans. The business failed. They're working regular jobs and they're screwed now. Yeah. They're freaking out. And half a million is over double that. So you got to think about the what ifs and not just get starry eyed about what could be. Yeah, save up cash. If you want to get into business, save up the cash to start it the right way. Start save slow. up a lot of cash to buy something that's already profitable. This is The Ramsey Show.
Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. George Campbell joins me. The phone number is 888-825-5225. If you want to join us for taking your money questions, your questions about your work, your income, that big shovel that we've called it for decades. Let's go to Michael now, who joins us in Sacramento, California. Michael, how can we help? Hey, guys. How's it going? Good. How are you, sir? Doing good. Better than I deserve, as Dave would say. There you go. Um, hey, so quick question on specifically baby step number six um, for in terms of paying off the house. Uh, we have a pretty low in, uh, pretty low uh, interest rate at about 3.375. Um, so that being said, does it make more sense to put all the monthly payment, like extra monthly payments towards the house um, in like installments? Or um, I was curious about maybe throwing it all in a, a you know high yield savings or like an index fund or something and then just getting up the lump sum and kind of paying it off in one go. Great question, Michael. Um, and I love that you're actively trying to pay this house down. And we get this question a lot right now because people do have these lower interest mortgages, you know, sub 5%, and their savings accounts are making 5%. So they're saying, like, why would I even pay off the mortgage? But your question is, should I sock away the money in the high yield savings and at the end of the year, throw that at the mortgage? Correct. So mathematically, I'd have to be looking at the amortization schedule and get super nerdy, but you can do that with your own numbers. I don't think it's going to make any mathematical sense to do that. Like the spread just isn't worth it for the $100 because your interest on your mortgage payment is going to be calculated monthly. So the sooner we knock that principal down, the less interest we're going to pay every month. And you'll notice the interest is sort of front loaded with that mortgage payment. So when you first start paying down the mortgage, you're not making any progress because most of that is going toward interest. So the sooner we can start flipping the scales here and getting most of the money going toward principal, the less interest you're going to pay, the faster the mortgage is going to get paid off. So I'll tell you what I did. We just put extra money on top of the principal payment every single month. So once a month, if it was on the first and the mortgage was two grand, let's try to put an extra grand that month on top of the principal. And so that I think is the best and simplest method with the least amount of brain calories. Okay, that makes sense. So so even if we were to be able to get it in an index fund or something and even pull it up from like five to ten five percent to say like ten percent or whatever, uh, you would still just suggest paying it off monthly and not not what's, going through. What's the hassle. your time horizon for this? Uh, well, so I, I have a, my salary is about 115 uh, that I get paid monthly, and then I have a side business um, that I also I get about three to five thousand on that. Um, so right now we're kind of in the space where we can live pretty comfortably on uh, the salary um, and not touch the side stuff as much. Uh, so it, it like I said, it varies. Some months it's two, some months it could be three or five or seven or whatever. Um, so the thought was to just put any of that extra towards, you know, whichever way we decide to go, put that towards the mortgage. Um, And so we owe about 330 or so. So I was kind of doing some of the math on it. And, um, you know, if we average out like three grand a month extra that we're paying, I think it's going to end up being about like a five or eight year, maybe a time span. So it's going to be a a minute, you know, because we're not going to get it paid off right away anyway. So that's where I wasn't sure if you know, long term, could that interest start kind of building up and working in our favor versus, uh, you know, paying sure. away at the three point three seven. Well, paying down so. the mortgage mm-hmm. now is going to be a forced savings plan, which I love. And putting the money in an investment account, you're adding a whole lot of risk to the equation because we don't know what that account's going to look like in a few years. And so I would rather just pay this down now, cut down the amount of interest you're paying every month, and it is going to be so encouraging and freeing to see that interest go down, to see the principal go down, see more going toward this mortgage actually getting paid off. So I would just do it every single month instead of waiting in a lump sum. And the other thing that happens is you have this money sitting in an index fund and an investment account, and all of a sudden you go, wow, we could really redo the kitchen with this money. Should we really pay it down the house? That's what happens psychologically speaking, Michael. Um, That's just human nature. So I like the forced savings plan of just saying every single month, whatever extra we can muster up, we're throwing at the mortgage. And it's going to be more motivating too because you're not going to see that mortgage balance go down by doing it the other way. Definitely, yeah, that makes sense. So that's what I would encourage, and it's what I've done personally. And it's how my wife and I have paid off our mortgage, and I have no regrets of the what-ifs of what if I invested that money or put it in the savings account to make the spread. 
it's not interesting to me. Well, the point that you're making here is that the, a paid off house or investing in your house by paying it down is a much safer play than even an index fund. As good as that return is long term. Well, and think about it. If you pay off the mortgage faster, now we free up the mortgage payment to now invest right. in the index so fund for both, the rest of our life. Both hand. Yeah. So people think, well, I would rather invest. We're, we've still been investing 15% of our income the whole time you're paying down the house. Exactly. That's baby step four and six. Love so it. great question. Let's go to Hunter now in Salt Lake City. Hunter, how can we help? Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. Sure. What's up? So I have a, a career question. So just a little bit of background. I finished a degree in healthcare management within the last year. And just recently, uh, last month, actually, I accepted a position to manage a primary care clinic in Salt Lake. Um, and honestly, it's just kind of not feeling right. I've been working in healthcare for the past three years or so. Um, but I'm just wondering if it's a bad idea for to look into a career change after only being in this position for about a month. Might be. Let's figure it out. What What's giving you pause? What's making you question this direction? You just went to school for this. You got a job in this, it sounds like. And a month in, you're going, whoa, what, what is going on there? Right. Give me, give me the, give me the right. rough, the rough, the roughest part of this that's causing you to question it. Well, honestly, I, I don't feel like I've ever been that passionate about the work. Like when I was working, I was working in a separate clinic before. And honestly, I really liked the people. And when I was going to school for it, I liked the people I was going to school with and everything. I just don't feel like I'm necessarily passionate for the work. And this clinic that I've just started at just doesn't have a very good culture. I don't so, think. okay. So we, we don't like the people. It's okay to say. Right, yeah, that's part of it. Well, then I would certainly not make a pivot out of this career lane just based on that. You know, it's kind of like saying, okay. uh, I've been married a month and we had our first fight. I think I'm on a divorce. Like, whoa. Uh, yeah. Oh, wait a second here. Like, that's part of the deal, right? There's going to be some days where you don't love your wife so much, right? But you choose to love her anyway and vice versa. So I think in this situation, it would absolutely be premature, right? Cause, because, it, but I will tell you, there's a, what I would call a yellow flag waving. The yellow flag is that you were never really passionate about this work anyway. Sounds like you chose this as a safe professional path. Is that about right? Yeah, that's right. Well, I will tell you the odds are that eventually we're going to make a pivot anyway. But but let's but let's stay let's kind of like stay still for a moment and and realize that okay, I'm an adult. I made my bed, I got to sleep in it. And either I stay in this healthcare side of things, the healthcare management side of things, I move maybe uh, six months from now, a year from now to a better culture so that I don't look like a flake because I got to keep this resume and I got to keep this professional image intact so that I can keep climbing. You understand that, yes? Yes. And now I'm going to figure out, okay, what is that pivot? Let me do the hard work now that I should have done in college. I'm going to give you, by the way, two tools. I'm going to give you my Get Clear Career Assessment, and I'm going to give you the book From Paycheck to Purpose. They go together. The assessment is like a compass, and the book From Paycheck to Purpose is like the field guide to climb the mountain. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah. So I'm going to give you those two resources because here's what you're trying to figure out. How can I use what I do best? That's your talent. To do work I love, you mentioned passion, that's what that is, to do work you really enjoy, to then produce a result that you care deeply about. This is where meaningful work comes into play, right? I see that I enjoy the work, but I also am very, very proud and, and, and I feel very significant because of the result that I'm creating. That's the answer, to use what you do best, to do what you love, to produce results that matter. Do you get that? Yeah, that sounds great. That, my man is what I'm all about helping people figure out. I'm going to give you those two tools. Hang on the line. Austin will get them to you. Now, listen, here's the key. Stay where you are now, okay, until we can figure out where we want to go next. And right now, you're just dealing with a bad culture, and you're just going to be a big boy. Put your big boy pants on and learn how to deal with it. And if we make a temporary move that leads us to a long-term play, that's, that's the goal. George Campbell, good hour. Hunter, thank you for the call. James Childs and the crew, thank you guys. This is The Ramsey Show.
the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions. This is the Ramsey Show, where we help you win in your life, specifically with your money, in your work, and in your relationships. The phone number is 888-825-5225. He's George Campbell. I'm Ken Coleman. Thrilled that you guys are hanging out with us today. George is our money expert and the author of a brand new and soon-to-be best-selling author status. Like, this is this book... It's called Breaking Free from Broke. And, uh, you know, look, I like to make predictions because, honestly, George, because I don't mind being wrong. You know That's what I mean? fair. I like, hope you're not wrong. I don't think I'm going to be. I think this is going to be a bestseller. I think it's going to be a number one. I'm going to project that. Wow. We've got another week. We're, we're wrapping up the first week of pre sale So yeah. here's the deal. Uh, if you're new to the program and you love George, and let's be honest, there's no way that you're not new to the program and you don't love George. He's just that Thank lovable. That. This is the new book, Breaking Free, uh, Breaking Free rather from Broke, The Ultimate Guide to More Money, Less Stress. By the way, you can get it at RamseySolutions.com or anywhere books are sold. And George, give me 10 seconds on the book. Can you Ooh, give me 10 yes. seconds? I believe the system is designed to keep you broke. And it's not all of your fault, but it's your responsibility Good. to rise above the system and live with more margin, more freedom, more options, and totally unplug from this toxic money culture of debt. Yeah. It's going it. to help a lot of people. So get it now. Breaking free from broke. RamseySolutions.com, wherever books are sold. All right. Let's go to Cincinnati, Ohio. Jack is there. Jack, how can we help? Hi. How are you guys? Good. How are you, sir? I'm Good. I wanted to get your input on a impending uh, house purchase for my family and I. We have been renting for uh, right now, and um, we are going to be moving for a new job in a few months. And we've been looking at houses in the six to nine hundred thousand dollar range. But I feel like our our financial situation is a little bit unique, and so I wanted to make sure that my calculations for that being a reasonable budget are correct. Okay. Lay it out for us. So the bad news is I have $250,000 in student loans. Oof. The good the good news is I've got zero credit card debt, zero car debt, and I use that student loan to become a doctor. Oh, uh-huh. what kind of a doctor? So um, let's just keep it to him in one of the higher paying specialties. So oh, okay. I very nice. Landed my I'll call it dream job. And so in in a few months we'll be moving for that and my new salary is gonna be six hundred thousand dollars a year. Congratulations. Woo! All right. That's Fantastic. Good. That's the good news on top of the two fifty. <laughs> yeah. But we still get so the two hundred fifty thousand. Yeah, so obviously we're we're planning on trying to pay that off in a year or less. Good. Wow, good for you. And so I wanted to make sure that you know we we buy a house that will not inhibit our ability to pay that off as fast as possible. So why not? I'm going to lay out a different option, just option B right now or C, mm-hmm. where you rent for a year, where you're going to move to. And you use that year to pay off the debt, to get an emergency fund, to build up a down payment. It might even be two years of renting. What would be wrong with that move? Yeah, we we have considered that. The the main reason why we don't want to do that is because we have been moving quite frequently for the last decade. Uh, It's kind of how things go with the uh, medical training process. And so we are sick of moving and, Mm. you know, just we're longing to be able to settle down somewhere and um, get a community and not have to uproot our lives every two years. Can I push back on that? That's the main thing. Let me push back on that. And uh, first of all, I understand it. Totally get it. Ken has done some moves in his day. I have. Uh, Jack, I totally understand. But you've done it this much over the last decade. You can do it one more time. And I think that's what George is proposing. You and can I even will hire t- some of those high-end movers that move all of – like they'll yeah. unpack the junk drawer and put it back in your new junk drawer. Yeah, I love that. But but just even higher up the ladder on the priority list than that. I love that George is right. You can get great movers and it's not that big of a deal. However, you're moving to a new area, starting a new job. I would not put the added pressure – do you have kids? Yeah. Yeah. See, I, Stacy and I, when we moved now, so let me tell you, so you know that I'm saying this from experience. This is what I would do. 
when when Stacy and I moved back here nine years ago, we had lived here for three years, no kids. Uh, we move away to Atlanta. Dave brings me back to join the team here nine years ago. It's going to be 10 years in June. And we rented for two years because this time around, even though we had lived here three years before, it had been 11 years in that gap, George. And we had three kids now, two of which were school age. One was going to be starting kindergarten. And we just said, you know, what? we're going to rent and resettle and get a lay of the land. And I think even more so because of all the moves you guys have made in the last 10 years. I, I would rent. I like George's I like George's suggestion for two reasons. One, financial. He's right absolutely about that. Two, gives you guys some time so that when you settle, you're settled. Yeah. We are familiar with the area we're going to be moving to, so it's not like we're it's a, it's a, a totally blind move. But you know, we, All right. We, you know what? Are, I still go with George. We are considering doing that path. I was just curious if if, if that number. But you're you're like considering a, taking on uh, potentially a seven hundred thousand dollar mortgage or more. Yeah, it's going to put you a million or more in debt. So it's going to be harder to pay right. off the student loans. Rent is going to be cheaper no matter where you're going when you're carrying that kind of debt. And I, I recommend you do this with a 15-year fixed rate mortgage where the payment is no more than a quarter of your take-home pay. Now, that parameter you won't right. struggle with because of your amazing income. But I also recommend you guys save up 20% down. So think about your next goals. We got to clean up the debt. Mm -hmm. We need a fully funded emergency fund of six months. We need a down payment of 20%. We just have some priorities here, and so that's why I don't recommend jumping into the house. You'll be there in no time, and I understand moving one more time is going to be a pain. But when you do it our way, it's going to give you so much more peace and margin, a smaller mortgage that you're going to knock out more quickly, and then you can afford all the home renovations and emergencies and the HVAC, and all that stuff will just be a slight inconvenience. Mm -hmm. That's our take, Jack. That's, that, what that's I probably not what you wanted to hear. What are you thinking? Before you call us, what number were you thinking about spending on a house, which means lending? I'm sorry? What were you thinking price-wise when you called us that you thought, well, I think I can do this. Let me call George and Ken and see what they think. What what, what number were you putting on the house? The the, the average that of houses we've been looking at online has been around 700 yeah. Well, what would that put you? How would that strain you? Would that strain you at all? Or do you feel about that 700000 How much could you put down? I think that we would be able to, um, we, would, we would not be able to put much down at all. Um, but so you move in with no equity would... whatsoever with a bigger mortgage. I mean, we're talking, if you did 700000 with nothing down, you're talking seventy five hundred, eight thousand dollars $8,000 on this wow. mortgage every month where you could rent for two or three in a nice place. So I'm doing that while you clean up this mess, but you'll be there in no time. You make over 600 grand. It's mind boggling. It's going to be a blink of an eye before you're in that house. Yeah, I, I agree with you, George. I think, uh, Jack, if you can just trust George's advice on this, I think you're going to come out feeling so much better on this deal. Have a great house, no debt. This is The Ramsey Show. to and you're watching the ramsey show we're coming to you from our worldwide headquarters in franklin tennessee just a little bit south of nashville i know you like when i say worldwide i just thought to myself yeah this is the international headquarters if you'd like to you know hype it up a little bit it is there is no well, other to be HQ. fair people visit us from all over the world now which is really fun Thank so you. if you're around the nashville tennessee area come see make us. us a part of your trip we'd love to have you we come out in the lobby and sign books and take pictures and you can get free coffee and baked goods and a mug and yeah. We make it a whole experience we for really you. do it is a lot of fun and we have some brave souls out here today Woo. uh it's a winter wonderland uh all of a sudden in the nashville area so uh you know uh glad you're with us no matter where you're listening how you're listening or watching triple eight eight two five five two two five is the number let's go to the big apple christopher joins us there christopher how can we help yes hi sir i appreciate you guys answering my call um I'm just uh, kind of in a situation, um, and I want to 
learn how to kind of start my life independently and also manage my finances uh, at the age of 23. Okay. Can you be more specific? What what challenges can we help you through now at the age of 23 that you're thinking through? So um, I was living with my father from the time I moved in, uh, from the age of 15 to 22. Uh, we were just living in an apartment together. Mm-hmm. He passed um, in September of 2022, so I was 22. Oh, so sorry um, for that loss. I appreciate that, sir. Thank you. And um, pretty much uh, from there, I um, I kind of stayed in that apartment for a while, just rent-free, and I eventually got evicted. And um, I had to move in with my uncle. So he, that was back in April of 2023, so not even a year ago. And um, what you call it? So I've been living with my uncle, so my dad's brother, uh, now for uh, about eight months. And um, he also has his health ailment, like ailments as well. Uh, like, you know, he has COPD. He's been on oxygen for 26 years. He's seven years old, so he's limited. Um, his time is limited. Um, and basically, you know, he's, he's actually in the hospital right now. Um, it's just me and him living in an apartment. Um, he's going to be okay, but I just want to, uh, kind of just plan for the future. You know, what are you um, doing for a living? Really, as of right now, I'm just a shift supervisor making $18 an hour, uh, at, you know, it's like a fast casual restaurant here in uh, New Jersey. Okay, what are you making per year? Um, I couldn't tell you. I would assume it's a very low income, such as I wouldn't say it's more than twenty five. Is this part time then? A year. Uh, no, it's actually full time. It's eighteen an hour, forty hours a week. Okay, so you're making about thirty six ish grand gross pay. But one of the things I want to come back is to, coming back to 25. Yeah, Christopher, the fact that you don't know means you you don't have any kind of budget. And that's going to hold you back no matter what the professional goals are. We'll get to that. So what do you want to do? Do you have any sense of the direction that you want to take? I do, 100%. What um, is that? I've never been to... Uh, interested in you know any type of profession the only passionate thing i've ever really found in my life was uh health and fitness um so i have a license as a like a certification for to be a personal trainer through um this program called nasm um i have that under my belt can you go have, work at a gym start, and work your way up to being a personal trainer at the gym sorry what was that sir can you go work at a gym even if it's for yeah, $18 dollars an hour right now to get into that field. Yeah, of course. Yeah, 100%. What's keeping you from doing that? Um, I don't know. I think uh, I nothing really aside myself. I think I took the loss, um, you know, a year and a half ago, kind of rough. And it's just been, you know, affecting me in more ways mentally than I realized. And it kind of... You know, because as, as as a personal trainer, it's mainly predicated upon sales. Yeah. So you have to go and talk talk up to clients, and you know you can't be shy. You have to be extroverted, and yeah, um, I'm sure you guys get the point. Yeah. Um, so how can so we help you today? Can, how can we help? So basically, sir, um, I have forty five grand uh, ish in an estate account left behind by my father. I'm very thankful for that. Um, and that's essentially, I have the ability to work. Um, I'm willing to do whatever kind of jobs I need to earn money. Um, do you have any debt? The only debt that I know of that I have is 1500. So 1,500 in uh credit card debt. And okay. maybe I took out a few years ago to uh, do com- try community college, um, come fast for loans. It's like kind of lower income. Uh, household, you know, to send you to community college. I might have, that might catch up with me in the future, but. Christopher, here's um, what I want you to do, because you you don't really know what's going on. Go to annualcreditreport.com and you can pull your credit report for free from all three bureaus. And that's going to tell you exactly what you owe. You need a very clear picture right now instead of just thinking and mm -hmm. feeling what's going on. 
and then use right, that money right, that your father right. left you to clean up the debt and get an emergency fund in place. Yeah. I think long term, you need to okay. get out of this situation and rent on your own with some roommates because I know it's New Jersey. It's expensive. But I would rather right. you rent with a guy your age who's on a similar path versus um, this situation. Man, you got to grieve. You've had a lot of hard stuff happen, and I think it's sort of just held you back, which is fine. But we need to form a path to move forward. And that means cleaning up the deck, get the emergency fund, switching our career. We got to get some mojo back, man. Yeah, Christopher. Yeah, no, 100%. You said something a minute ago that I want to challenge you on because you called today. And so I want to honor your time and the fact that you've put yourself out there. Um, you said, I'm willing to work to do whatever. And I don't think you are. I think you're allowing right. your fear and doubt may be a combination of both. You may have fear hanging out on one shoulder and doubt hanging out on the other. And fear, by the way, is is worry that something bad is going to happen if I move forward. Doubt is I don't believe something good will happen if I move forward. Very different, but they gang up on you. And the fact that you've done the hard work to get the licensing, I understand that building a successful personal training business is sales, yes. But it doesn't mean you have to start there. It doesn't mean you have to put all your eggs in that basket. Um, and and maybe just as George said earlier, I think it was a simple piece of advice, but I think it was profound. Just go work at a gym, man, and and, and just get your confidence up, right? And don't rely right. on you know being self-employed per se if you can get one of those jobs. Just get in the industry, get in there, remind yourself why you love. You said the only thing you've ever been passionate about is the is the exercise, the nutrition, all that goes into that. You need to get in that environment because what that will do is get your heart reengaged and give you that what I call the juice, but it's just that motivation that you need to overcome the fear and the doubt. That's what's missing right now is you're not in that environment to where it is igniting your heart and giving you that real chemical reaction that the brain sends to the body and, and, and you're just kind of stuck and you've had a tough time and we get that and we honor that. But you need to get in the zone, man, where you want to be. Get in those places. And then over time, you're going to start to get more confident to go, okay, I see what it's going to take to build a little side business here. And I start my physical training business as a side hustle. I don't put all my eggs in that basket. That's what I want you to hear today, Christopher. Uh, and, and I think that you've got this blanket on you of fear and doubt. And the only way to pull that off is to actually step forward one little step at a time, much like we teach in the baby steps with get that $1,000. You know, baby step one and go, oh, I accomplished that, George. I just think it gets he you needs moving. to get going. Yeah. I mean, post in a neighborhood Facebook group and go, hey, I'm doing mobile fitness. I'll come to you yeah. with a little bit of equipment and I'll show you how to do this. That's a great way to get started at no cost to you. Yeah. And get some clients that way and then work at the gym and start to make connections. Yeah. Hang on the line. line. I want to send Ken's book, Proximity That's Principle. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Great minds think alike. It's, it's unbelievable. What's he going to get out of that? He's going to get the playbook on how to make connections, getting around the right people, getting in the right places, and opportunities show up on his doorstep. That's what that book does. Hang on the line, Christopher. This is The Ramsey Show. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. George Camel joins me. 888-825-5225 is the number to jump in. And uh, George, you told me during the commercial break you were excited to tell me about something. What do you got on your mind here? This this is very exciting. I never know what you're going to hit me with. You like steak? I love a good steak. This has to do with steak in a roundabout way. All right. So Taste of Texas. What is that? It's a restaurant in Texas. I have no affiliation. They're not a sponsor. But they posted on Instagram and they tagged us. And here's the post, Ken. Our team's going to throw it up if you're watching on YouTube. Oh, they tagged us. They tagged us. And here's what happened. Here's the post. Okay. 
Today, we celebrated 17 staff members who completed Dave Ramsey's Financial wow. Peace University course. Nina and I had a drawing, and two winners got $5,000 each to pay off credit cards and get out of credit card hell. Laura and Jason were the lucky winners. Employees were encouraged to pay the 80 bucks for the course out of their own pockets, wow. then submit a completion certificate for reimbursement of $250. I see what they did there. A three-to-one bonus over the cost of the course. Wow. The names of the 17 who completed the course went into the drawing for the two prizes, so proud of them and they threw up a photo that oh is, those are the two winners that's amazing but it made me think because you're in the workspace yeah imagine if every employer across america said hey we want to do this for our team we want to put them yeah. through financial peace university or if you're in in hr an employer smart dollar smart dollar yeah. is, is the corporate version of this how encouraging is that to your team to go hey we believe in you we know you yeah. guys have money goals we're yeah. a part of that because we're providing income for you and your families we want to see you win with money and pay off debt well i'll tell you that's incredible it's a benefit because here's what happens if you as a leader or manager However you want to do it, Taste of Texas was really innovative. I thought pretty creative in doing this. To really, not, really not well cover done. the cost, but skin in the game, you cover it. When you finish it, you'll get more than you put in. I love it. It was That's a little really cool. bonus incentive there. I thought it was great. Uh, what happens is is the the end result of that. And I want to I want you to remind folks again, give us the averages, because you know it off the top of your head. People go through the nine week course of Financial Peace University. And they're saving how much and paying how much off? I believe they pay off $5,700 in the first 90 days and save $2,300. So it's an $8,000 turnaround in three months. All right. So you take that number. And as a manager and as a leader, you help your team member get to that point in their life. And not just that initial turnaround. I don't want to get locked in on that number. But it's the momentum that comes out of that. That becomes an amazing employee benefit. And they're going to be more engaged because they're not stressed out with money. Yep. So that leads to higher productivity and higher profitability. There's higher morale. Yeah, but, it's all, a that team building exercise. but all that leads to higher productivity oh, yeah. and higher profitability. Which you asked me the question. Bottom line is it's a great business growth strategy. And in a day and age where people are moving on quicker, they're not as loyal because they don't get treated well, candidly. Sure. It's a great leadership play. Well, and it says, I believe in you. And it when really a, when does. When a leader, a company says, I believe in you, I'm going to be more loyal to that company and more, yeah. I'm going to feel like I'm going to stay longer. So where is this taste of Texas It's at? in Houston. Oh, we were, I was just in Houston for the national championship. So I don't know if they'll, I I'm sure, I that. hope they end up hearing about this because I started looking at their menu, Ken, and I'm now craving a tomahawk ribeye. Can you imagine me downing 38 ounces <laughs> of ribeye? Let me tell you something. It would take you three days to eat 38 ounces. You're a little man. I think like the, the TV networks would be calling me saying, we want to start a new series called Little Man Versus Food. <laughs> Way more impressive. I know that uh, 38 ounces would give the meat sweats to just about anybody. Taste of Texas, congratulations on great leadership. George and I can be bought. Uh, so this is not an endorsement anyway, but if you'd like to send a gift card uh, the next time George and I are in Houston, we would love to come and, we'll and show up and, and sample if, the food and put it on Instagram. And if you want to check out Smart Dollar, you can do that at smartdollar.com. It's our financial wellness benefit that you can offer to your team. We have huge companies that do this, Ken. That's exactly right. U-Haul and Costco. It's one of and, the greatest personal benefits that a leader can give to their team member is to give them financial peace. It's a huge, huge payoff. By the way, before we move on, have you ever had a tomahawk steak? I did at my uh, my bachelor party. Oh, that was the did, one time. How much did you eat? Did you pull it up by the? Did you handle it like a man? Well, they ended up they did brought it out it? and then they took it back and cut it for me oh, to make it more palatable. No, see, if you're, you're going to eat a tomahawk eat steak, you got to grab it and just chew on it like Fred Flintstone. That's what you got to do with that. I don't care where you're at. That's what you got to do. At least one bite. Wow. I don't care if it's a highfalutin, you know, hoity-toity five-star steakhouse. I'm grabbing that thing. Like Mike Gundy, the head coach of Oklahoma State, said, I'm a man! You, you lost gotta grab me. it. You lost me when you started talking about football. All right, never you mind. You should know better. That's true. Uh, I'll explain it to him on the break, folks. If Let's you want to talk Madonna, I can do that all day. But You can talk Madonna? Not much. <laughs> me talking to you about college football is is like... Someone giving me a uh, maybe like a crash course on the planet Pluto, you know, what which I mean? doesn't even exist anymore. Pluto doesn't yeah, exist. I think they took it out of the running in the textbooks. That's it, not true. It exists. It's just not classified as a planet anymore. Conspiracy theory. It's not real. James, no are you for real? It. I didn't know this. This is pretty old news at this point. Yeah, I'll wow. send you a Wikipedia article. Decades old, Ken. <laughs> okay, I'm not kidding you. This is breaking news to me. 
I had no idea. Please tell me Uranus is still a planet. That one's good. Yeah. <laughs> We're safe. Okay. All right. Whew. All right. Let's move on. Erica is on the line in Minneapolis. Erica, how can we help? Hi. How are you guys? Well, I hope you're okay, given that last two minutes I'm you had sorry. to endure. I apologize. You're you never going to get better. that back, but I hope you enjoyed it. That's all right. A little uh, lesson for us all today, I guess. Yes, absolutely. Uh, how can um, we help? Yeah. I'm just calling because I've got a question in regards to what I'm being paid. I currently work in supply chain in the Minneapolis area, and I've been working as a buyer for okay. about seven years now okay. for raw materials and distribution. And um, rec- I have to go for my annual review coming up here soon, and I'm just a bit nervous about what kind of percentage I'm asking for when looking at the duties required um, to move up to the next phase in my career. Okay, let's break it down. So what are you thinking? Let's just let's fast forward to this meeting with your leader. What are you thinking you want to ask for percentage wise as a raise? Uh, At least uh, eight to 10 percent. Eight to 10 percent. What's that based on? uh, I would just say just based on the um, like looking at ranges on salary.com for what I'm being paid. Um, and are also those like the- are those ranges, could you sit there in front of me, let's forget the boss for a moment, but could you explain it to me right now to show that those are pretty close to apples to apples as it relates to your experience, your skill set, and then the industry itself? Do you feel like that's pretty fair to say that you're being paid 8 to 10% less than you should be? Yes, I mean in the in the industry, the ranges go from anywhere from sixty six to eighty two thousand. Okay, um, and where so it's are you? Quite a, uh, I am total compensation for the year without any health benefits or anything is I'm right at sixty six five. Okay, so you're on the low range, low end of the yes, range. Yes, sir. All right, that's really good. So, is your do you have some anxiety over how to to bring this up? Is that what you're asking? And a a bit of anxiety and just when um, my supervisor gave me the position to move into a buyer three. And it seems that from the way I'm looking at it and the work I'm putting out every day, the only difference between a two and a three is that it says you have to have expert knowledge in the industry and materials and you have to have a bachelor's degree or three to five years of experience, which I do have both of those. Okay. Have they brought up compensation? Um, it, yes, we did. We did have a quite a few layoffs this year. Um, so I'm, I think that's what's giving me a bit of anxiety is pushing back um, with people. Uh, the other buyer that I work with has said that she got five percent, um, although she's only been there about a year and a half. So I'm just that's good news for you. To- That's good news, given that there's been layoffs. Okay, and in 30 seconds, I'm going to give you the playbook for this that I give to everybody. you got to do your homework. I feel like you've done a good job on homework. And you go in and you go, look, here's the industry standard. But you also need to know that your leader is probably not the sole authority on this approval. Probably got to go up. So what you got to do is not put them on the defensive. You got to make the case and say, hey, I'm on the low end of the range based on the industry standard. I like being here. I want to be here. I want to grow. Uh, and, and, and so this is where I'm at on the range. I certainly like to move up on the range. What can I do to help you? What's the measurement? And that's the conversation. It's a posture of humility and hunger, not demanding. This is The Ramsey Show. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. George Campbell joins me. 888-825-5225 is the number to jump in. That's 888-825-5225. Let's go to our scripture of the day. It comes from Isaiah 54, 17. When God is for you, no weapon formed against you will prosper. Our quote, 
Now, you don't know who this guy is, George. You don't know that yet. Who is it? Okay. <laughs> you assume You that. know what? Good call. I apologize. I stand corrected, maybe. John Wooden. The great coach. From? That's where you lost me. <laughs> I just know he has, he's got a lot of great that's quotes. What, I'm impressed. UCLA, I'm going to give you partial credit. UCLA, University of California, Los Angeles, for those that are keeping score at home. Was not on my bingo card. He was called the Wizard of Westwood. 11 national championships. This is what he said. Failure is not fatal, but failure to change might be. And I think that has a tie-in to financial failure. Oh, 100%. You know? I mean, Dave Ramsey's story. Yeah. Going through bankruptcy in the 80s. To building That's an empire right. and helping millions. No with their shame finances. in your game is what we like to say around here. Uh, so good stuff there from Coach John Wooden. Let's go to Aubrey now, who joins us in Houston, Texas. Aubrey, how can we help? Hello, how are you? We are having a blast today. How are you? Great. I'm good. I'm good. Good. So, so um, I was wondering whether or not I should sell 34 acres that I own or finance or just continue to pay it. Wow. Tell us the details on the land itself. So the land is strictly raw. There's nothing on it. There were cows at one point. Um, it's fenced off for cattle. Mm-hmm. Um, but right now I don't have anything actual like cattle based on it. It's just completely empty and it's raw land. What would you say it's worth? Um, it's worth about 200000 Um, I got a quote from somebody that if I were to sell it, it'd be about $6,000 an acre. Um, but that doesn't include like their commission of 6% from the sale. What do you owe on it? And I currently owe as of today, uh, $182,000 at a 1% interest rate. Okay. What do you think, George? Well, what was the reason you bought the land in the first place? So I had bought the land in conjunction of buying, um, another piece of land that had a house on it. Um, I had got, I was newly married and then, in 2021, we started to go through a divorce. Mm. So um, I got the 34 acres, and then he kept the other mortgaged um, property. However, my name was on it, so it's going into foreclosure here soon. Oh. So I wasn't sure what I should do because um, I do have three kids, and I gross about 53000 a year, almost fifty four. but take home is only about thirty five, thirty four, with all mm. the deductions that come out of my check. Mm. And that doesn't include like daycare, rent, vehicle insurance, my phone. Um, then I have to have like a lawyer fee. And basically uh, monthly I can bring home about $440 and then split that in half. So it's about 219 to spend on living. And so I don't even oh, have Oh my a, goodness. Bless Aubrey, I, I feel have... your stress right now and anxiety. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And for that reason alone... Even if this was your dream to have this land and do all this magical stuff on it, I'm getting rid of this land and getting rid of the payment and starting fresh. I agree. You got three wonderful kiddos. You got a lot of life ahead of you, and you're restarting. And part of the restart is we had this dream. We bought this land. Mm -hmm. The dream crumbled, and now I got to find a new dream, and that's okay. But hey— uh, Aubrey, you get out of this thing unscathed, essentially, this land, if you sell it now. You owe 182 and you'll walk away with at least 182 after all the fees? Well, no, not necessarily. Oh. So I owe 182 and if I were to sell it at about 204 and then with the commission, I would probably walk away between ten and $12,000 after okay. sale. So, yeah, you would net ten grand. Yes. Sir. Okay, that's Around great. There, that's huge. Depending if I end up having to pay for closing costs or anything. Sure. Do that's you have any, any debt outside of that? Um, I have like $1,000 on a credit card, but my tax return is going to come in. I'm going to pay that off. So great. Besides that, that's no. good news. And do you have anything in savings? Nothing. Okay. And where are you living Not right now? Not a rainy day fund. Uh, right now, I'm cohabitating, so I pay half rent. But I assume you want to get out of there. Yeah, I do. Okay. So that is part of the reason I would put a fire under your belly to get mm-hmm. rid of this property. Get out. Are you, what's the situation with the kiddos? Um, they live with me full time. I pay for everything. I, I haven't even got my uh, final decree yet. Okay. So um, nothing's I even, finalized. I don't receive, yeah. I don't, I don't receive any type of, um, I guess you could say it's like child support or anything. It's just strictly me doing it. Do all you think myself. that you will get any? Um, I should be getting around a thousand. A month if okay I, if he pays. If we're into finalizing, yeah, if he, yeah, that too. If he pays, is he a deadbeat? 
Uh, right now, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. the fact that you're taking care of them full time tells me it tells a me lot. a lot. Yeah. So we uh, want to we want to move forward. Let's assume. Here's my point in asking that question, Aubrey. It's not to add insult mm-hmm. to injury here, but uh, George, going forward, I would advise her. Let's assume he doesn't pay anything, so that if he does, it's gravy. That would be my mm-hmm. advice in this situation. Yeah. I want you to be self-sustaining in that way. So here's my plan. If, if I'm doing it my way and I was coaching you one-on-one, Aubrey, and I was in your shoes, I would get rid of this land. You pocket the 10K. That's going to become your emergency fund. Let's get rid of the credit card debt. Now let's go find somewhere that we can rent for a while with the kids and mm-hmm. start fresh. And eventually, I want you to be a homeowner and have this new dream. But right now, we just got to kind of clean up the mess and get some foundation under us as we walk through this this terrible situation. Yes, sir. Okay. What's your? Can I ask real quick, Aubrey, about your income? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What What are your income possibilities? If, if If you and I were just sitting at your kitchen table and we're going, okay, how could we make twenty thousand more, forty thousand more, sixty thousand more? What would you say to me if I asked that question? Um, so in the line of work that I do, um, there is a possibility that I could work like every Sunday and make like $160. Okay. So if I'm willing to sacrifice the family time for money, then that's an option. I think in the short term, every nickel at this point helps and the kids are going to understand and you sit down and explain it to them. You're already going through a very tough thing anyway. So, you know, you explain, Hey, this is what mom is doing and why. Um, mm-hmm. I think they're just going to be so grateful for you and your sacrifice. It's the kind of thing that they may mention in a speech, you know, uh, graduating high school someday. Uh, so I, I certainly mm-hmm. would do that. But wh- I, I'm thinking bigger than $160. You know, what what can mm-hmm. we do to expand your income? Well, what's what's up the ladder two or three levels? Well, um, in April, I'll get a dollar raise. And then the next go around in January, I should probably get another dollar raise. What are you doing for work? Uh, I work in law enforcement. Okay. Oh, okay. It, did the, does it have good benefits with that? Um, I mean, the extra jobs that you can work, yeah. Is so, there overtime? Can you work at a church doing security? I don't know what role exactly, but are there opportunities like that? So, yeah, like um, working like an extra job, like church for like security, that's what I usually do on a Sunday is I'll go out and I'll work. Okay. And that's the 160. Every Sunday. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I try see. not to count it. I try not to count it just in case there's a time where I, you know, mm. somebody else takes the job. So I try not to live off that. So are you a deputy or a police officer? Is that what I'm understanding? A police officer. Okay, great. Well, thank you for your service, by the way. Not only are you a superhero as a, as a single mom. You also are out there putting yourself uh, on the line for the citizens of your area, and so you're 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 an absolute hero, and and I hope you feel that. We certainly believe that about you. Oh, thank you. Well, we I, we answered a lot more than the question, Aubrey. We apologize, we did, but yeah. I hope it helps yeah. you take the yeah. right next step. There's a lot of steps to take, but I hope we gave you the right one right now, which is. Get rid of the land, get some financial footing under you, clean up all the debt, cut yep. up the cards, and find somewhere to rent on your own and just get out of the situation to some stability and safety. Aubrey, real quick question. How are you doing on your budget? Mm-hmm. Do you feel like you're strong at budgeting? Need a little help? What's going on there? Uh, really strong at budgeting. The, literally, Good. the only bills that I pay is daycare, rent, vehicle, phone, and then, of course, I have like a lawyer fee just in case I'm sued. And then uh, okay. I pay like $10 for, app, uh, for iCloud. Okay. Besides that, that's <laughs> you are, that's really you are she a rock star. on it. Well, hey, I'm going to gift you every dollar premium yes. for the next year just to alleviate one more thing and give you one more yes. tool in the tool belt. But we believe in you, Aubrey, and I hope you believe in you. You're going to get through this and on the other side. Yeah. Hang in there. Work the baby steps. Keep going. You're going to be great. Sell the land. It's going to give you tremendous relief and take off a huge chunk of debt. George Campbell, great show as always. Always enjoy. always enjoy hanging out with you. I want to thank James Childs, our fearless leader, and all the guys in the booth. And you, America, thank you so much. This is your show. This is The Ramsey Show.